Hey everyone, I hope you're all having such a lovely day. Whenever I come home, I always absolutely love um, coming back and, and going through my drawers and finding all these old books that I've written, so many of my thoughts and um, things that I've heard or read that really resonated with me. And one of the things I was reading today was, um, I must have been in a lecture by Radhanath Swami listening, a class by him, and I um, wrote down something to do with criticism. And I thought I'd share it because I think it's something that I personally need to be reminded of on a daily, hourly basis. Um, but also something I feel everybody would probably be able to relate to and benefit from hearing too. So I'm going to read it out to you. It says, a critical mind. Oh, that was the title, <laughs> a critical mind. Um, he said that the greatest enemy in all of the creation is our own nonsense tendency to find faults and misunderstand others. That is the greatest enemy because that enemy can not only destroy ourselves, but it could also great, cause great harm to others. Criticism is one of the major roadblocks on the path of our spiritual progress. It has a tendency to gradually snowball into a monstrous proportion where we not only derive pleasure in criticizing others, but also start becoming envious and intolerant of others' success. So easy for criticism, it is so easy for criticism to go in the back of the mind unnoticed like white noise. And then he says that criticism stems from a deep rooted false pride in what we are and what we can do. Proclivity to criticize is actually an expression of self-glorification. And when I was thinking about that, I thought, why would it be self-glorification? And I guess it's because when we are criticizing, we are naturally um, thinking ourselves as being better, thinking ourselves to be more superior to that person um, by criticizing or putting the other person down based on what they've done. And so, um, yeah, I feel like I work on this regularly, whether it's words that I say out loud or whether it is my mind, because often we're able to control our mouth from saying things, but we're not necessarily, necessarily able to stop our mind from thinking them. And so um, I think I've spoken about this a few times, but hey, it's always nice to hear it again, I think, for myself. I feel like when I talk talk to this, it's like me talking to myself. Um I often write down whenever I have had those thoughts and think about why they came, why they came to my mind, what triggered them, and also what I would have preferred my response to be. That's number one. Um, and number two, then figuring out what those, the reason behind it of why that came to our mind usually roots and stems from something that we have not dealt with ourselves. So really figuring out what that is and trying to find ways of dealing with those emotions or uh, those experiences that we've had that have made us criticize somebody for that specific thing. Um, and the other thing is whenever I end up saying something out loud, one, I usually end up regretting it um, and feeling like I wish I hadn't said it. And so what really stops me from that is really thinking before I end up saying this one thing um, and thinking about even that one thing, if everybody's putting out that critical energy into the world, it's accumulating into something much, much bigger. That energy is getting bigger and bigger the more that we vocalize our criticism and negativity. And so I always think whenever I think about putting something like that into the world, I always say to myself, is this something that's even going to be beneficial for that person to hear? Is this going to be something that's beneficial for me to um, to express? Um, and is it going to benefit anybody in any way? Um, and I really think that most of the time when you go through those steps, you realize that actually maybe it's not beneficial to me or them or anybody at all, to be honest. And so, um, yes, that I thought was a really, really powerful thing to think about because I loved also when he said that it becomes unnoticed in the mind like white noise. And actually, if we end up doing things over and over and over again, our mind recognizes that as something that is normal. And so we normalize that negative behavior. So even to us, it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing to do or that we shouldn't be doing it. And so it's really noticing those things and being extremely aware when we are um, vocalizing something or even in our mind thinking it. So I hope that was useful. Um, and I will be sharing more of all of my notes. It's actually really beautiful reading through where my mind was at different parts of my life and what was really resonating with me. Um, and that was one of them many, many, many years ago. Oh, in 2017. 
sending you all so much love and thank you so much for all your wonderful messages always you are all so loving and kind and i really appreciate it so much